Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is 6.05 Tuesday morning. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Uh, yeah, real quick here. Uh, today, today is 13. 13 trading sessions without the SPX visiting minus 1%. We did close green yesterday and 41.50.70 would be our minus 1%. A lot of things to go over before that. Keep this real quick. First and foremost... 4205, 4200 spreads Friday, started the day out with that. And they were getting a little bit better than three as we were getting ready for Powell and obviously got a little bit better and closed out full credit. Yesterday, again, talking about, or Sunday, talking about it, getting ready ahead of the open. 4205, 4200s posted early in the morning yesterday. You might be able to get a $2 fill. Well, we got a $2 fill, and a couple of you got $3 fills on that initial pop in the morning. Congratulations. You did quite well. Uh, today, I am, again, starting it out again with the exact same call, 4205, 4200s, and they are getting a little bit better than $2 as of right now. Again, that 4200 level, we are visiting it. We are not closing above it. And yesterday, as fake news as that Pentagon bombing or explosion thing may have been, thank God we got it, or else we would have been a lot smaller than a 29-point range yesterday. Gap down one point, closed above the open two points almost, closed above the close almost one point. What a fucking boring day. So boring is good. But as you saw, Fed Bullard coming out, even though he's not a voting member, talking about two more rate hikes. You also had it coming out from other members of the FOMC, the Fed. Market didn't give a shit. Market only cares about this. What color fucking socks McCarthy's wearing when he goes to the White House? Debt ceiling, debt ceiling, debt ceiling. And today... There is going to be more debt ceiling bullshit that comes out. Fed's Logan, 9 o'clock in the morning. Manufacturing and services PMI, 945, right after we open. New home sales at 10. Nothing else other than something that may just show up out of nowhere. So, again, that's what we're looking at. But before I go to the charts, I want to bring to your attention, this isn't something to make an action on but it is something to know about because it's out there and it, it's being made known to the public. 60,000 pounds of explosive chemicals lost during rail shipment, officials say. 60,000 fucking pounds. And this can be used as both a fertilizer and an explosive. Ammonium nitrate. And this happened a little bit more than a week or two weeks ago. So... It is, again, you know, that's what they're talking about. This is the same thing that was used in the Oklahoma City bombing. It's simply something to know about. This part, I can't confirm. There were reports coming out last night saying that dozens of senators are being issued satellite phones in preparation of a disruptive event. Again, no confirmation. Don't know anything about this. But... The charts are ready for it. I'll start you out here with the VIX. Friday and yesterday, somebody has been loading, loading the June 21 VIX 30 calls. Now, we've seen 50 Cent come out before, and 50 Cent is, I believe he's out in July or he might be out into August. But the, we had 50 Cent back in April. April was where we started getting the sell signals. April was when we should have had our roll down. As you all know, we are six weeks in this going nowhere. But this is something definitely to, again, use the information that's being accumulated together with the debt ceiling, together with the debt ceiling deadline. Somebody's loading these June 21 VIX calls. So be very well aware of that. I am going to share with you some four-hour charts before I finish off with where we are on the futures. Tesla filled that gap, broke above the old earnings, filled that gap over at the earnings. 
one little tiny fractional gap way up here from back in the beginning of April. But as you can probably tell just by looking right now, you're at a decision point up here at this 190. Your four hour chart, uh, that's where your four hour was overbought. That's where your four hour was overbought. Here, your four hour overbought, overbought, overbought. As you can see the results, you got overbought yesterday. So be very well aware of that. Going to go through a couple of names because it's only a couple of stocks. Look at this disgusting motherfucker right here. This right here is what you call like a fat piece of shit who goes into the gym and everybody's looking at him when you do all the work to get six pack abs, have a perfectly manicured body and nobody's paying attention to you. An absolutely disgusting cell divergence on the four hour over here on Meta as they got fined the largest fine in history for sharing their data. They go out and post a new high yesterday. Uh, Google. Same thing with Google. Here's your four hour looking at your 50 day moving average way down here at 106. Very extremely overbought on your four hour multiple times. You've got your big earnings gap down here to 112. Again, just something to be considerate of. And then we have NVIDIA's earnings that are coming out on on Wednesday. Nothing that the chart can tell you about NVIDIA because NVIDIA is going to do what NVIDIA is going to do after they report on Wednesday and say AI, 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 AI. Microsoft, again, same thing, just continues to pound being extreme overbought. Massive gap over here from earnings from back just a few weeks ago in April. And here you are well above this 315, which is your March, not August, your March 2022 highs. So, you know, that's where all your jokers are. Here's your ES futures looking at the week to date. We were just having a nice little sell down overnight. As you can see, the slide just continuing all the way from when they came out at nine o'clock and talked about debt ceiling bullshit. Japan opened up and Japan decided, you know what? I think it's time that we pulled our rug. Here is the Nikkei. The Nikkei on today. As you can see here, right there, right around 8, 9 o'clock at night, you had your big spike high, finally taking it out. 33-year highs over here. And then a very nice decline, almost 2% over on the Nikkei. Going to zoom you out so that you can see this, right? Now, this is from the beginning of the year. This is not the Nikkei, the stock market in Japan. This is Facebook, Microsoft. That's what this is. This is, I mean, you, you never see anything like this. And here's your maximum view looking at the monthly. You're not able to get everything that goes back, but yeah, you are 20% from your all-time highs looking back over there. 20 week can't go back any further for one reason i don't know but here you are there's your nikkei breaking out above the 2021 highs that it posted and kaboom so that's where we're at from that point of view and here's your nasdaq nasdaq again week to date this is your starting point from sunday night futures spike up last yesterday up to that high and just floating down to where we are I'll show you here on the qqq and that's your QQQ look as far as what we're talking about. Right up there to that 339, floating above that 337. And I have a different chart up on my screen, clean. So you're floating in that area with that 339 already sufficed, 327 way down below. And luckily, because I have been able to put together this new uh, QQQ sheet, 341 is your plus 1%. 334.26 is your minus 1%. You have not had a minus 1% day in almost 18 sessions. I'll count it, put it in the email for you so it is there for you to use because these are extremely cheap for lottos. You have Janet Yellen talking tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning. So that is something that you can use to your advantage come that time. And then finish off here with the SPX. Now, again, breaking above this 4198.70 Fibonacci, but we are continuing to close down below it. 
call it whatever you want from a chart pattern point of view, from whatever point of view that you, you want to talk about. I've drawn in here just a simple little guideline as far as what would be minus 1%. So minus 1% from that 42.12.91 would be 41.71. 4129 and then 4086. Those would be your one, two, and three percent declines. Zoom you back to where we've been, and this is what we've been doing for 30 days. We were crushing it with 4155 until McCarthy came out with that bullshit about a deal being doable by Sunday, which obviously it is not. And zoom you out a little bit more and as you can see here, this is where we have been trolling around. We've got this one gap from May 4th, another one from March 30, another one from March 29 that haven't been filled. All other gaps are from way, way back last year. Nothing to be concerned about. And this is where we are headed into as we go into Janet Yellen tomorrow. 4109 is our five day lows. So as we have continued to hold this 4180, Right over here, over the past three days, bring you up here, three days, two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is. <clears throat> right there around that 4180 line is what we've continued to hold. So for every intent and purpose, 4180 is your level that you are concerned about. Anything that gets broken below 4180, we immediately open up our big mother 4155 and then we can start looking at other things. So happy Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. Uh, again, with this, with the satellite phones, I can't confirm it. This is out on multiple websites, including NBC News, about the 60,000 pounds. Your debt ceiling, your debt ceiling, your debt ceiling. That's all over the place. It's going to continue to be all over the place. And Janet Yellen's going to be speaking tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So have a fantastic morning. I won't be doing the LeBron James dancey dancey today, but we will definitely be looking at something as we head into tomorrow with Janet Yellen.